So here's where I'm getting at with this. Let's circle back to that original situation. I believe that if there was enough for everybody, I don't think that this man would be in a situation where he has to choose either either I'm going to um either I'm going to uh feed, you know, either either I'm going to stretch myself uh financially in a way that's uncomfortable by buying more food than I can afford or I have to be the bastard who only feeds my daughter. Um I'm under the assumption that a man that a decent man, and maybe I'm making a big assumption here because there's a lot of indecent men out here. I don't know. It's life. Um, but I'm going to make the assumption that a decent man who has plenty of money has no problem feeding multiple children. I, I, I know I, I'm, I'm under that. I'm under the assumption that a decent man who loves his daughter, who doesn't want her to be in the awkward, horrific situation of being the only kid in the group to have food, I'm going to be live under the assumption that the father, if he loves his daughter, if he truly loves her, would not put her in that situation where she's got food and everyone else is starving. Um, I would not want to do that to my child. I would not want them in a situation where they're going to get beat up because I bought food for them and isolated them in a group where everybody else doesn't have enough. Right. So so here's what I'm getting at. I think that one of the challenges that you have in families and the reason you have to make these really crazy, awkward, hard, traumatic choices is because your black men. Are not trained on how to make money at an early age. Black males are the most undereducated group of people in America. They are the least prepared to succeed financially in America. You just are, it's just a fact. Well, why, why is that? Well, part of it is obviously racism. I don't think America is a country that ever wanted to see truly intelligent, educated, strong, capable black men, because then we become a threat. Then we're ready to fight you. That, that's where Toussaint Overshore comes from. That's where Nat Turner comes from. They, they don't want a bunch of Nat Turners. They don't want a bunch of Malcolm Xs. They show they don't want a bunch of Boyce Watkinses out here. If you had 10 million Boyce Watkinses out here, oh, the revolution would be over. We would have more money than white people. Can you imagine if there were 10 million young black males who thought like me, who who understood finances and economics like me? Oh, we could we would walk, we would walk in and take everything you got. You would have to come and kill all of us. So so effectively, my point is to say. That 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 yeah, the racism's there. We know this, right? We we know what happens in the public school system. I know that they that I've been hunted since birth. I know I understood why uh, Instagram took down my Facebook page, even though they don't take down pages of rappers that are promoting the most degenerate, horrific. So they're promoting drug use and violence. You know, they 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 they. I understand that, right? I wasn't mad about it. I said, yeah, if I were you, I'd want to get rid of somebody like me too. I understand why the public school system uh, tried to uh, di redirect me toward medication and special education, right? I understood. I understand why they told my 17 year old single mother to abort me so that I would never be born. I understand these things. It's like the it's the baby Jesus story. The black man is is a type of super being that they fear on every level. That we we're already more physic we're already more physically capable than anyone else. And I believe that when we're at our best, we're also intellectually more capable than everyone else. I do believe that. So so effectively, we know this, right? This is real, right? So let's get past. Let's finish the part of the conversation where we blame the white man for all of this because yes, he's 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 complicit a hundred percent. I want to go to the next part of the conversation where we look at ourselves and we look at each other. I want to go to the next part of the conversation where we know that we're being robbed in broad daylight, that we're being misled in broad daylight, that our children are being destroyed in broad daylight, and we ain't doing nothing about it. I want to get to that part of the conversation uh, be, you know, be, because I can tell you this. Um, when I look at black boys and I, and I go into a classroom full of black boys, and I say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And half of them say, I want to be a basketball player. And the other half say, I want to be a football player. And then the other thirds or whatever, with the, the rest of them say, I want to be a rapper. What are, this, this is, this is what's happening to your, a lot of your young black males. They're being, uh, they're being misdirected uh, and rejected by public school systems and also by the economic system. And then on top of that, they're being guided by these false dreams of athletic success or entertainment success.
And because there are only so many seats at that table, especially when you don't own anything, when you don't own any of these institutions or industries, uh, then there aren't that many opportunities out there, right? So, so it kind of becomes this horrible scenario where you've got the millions of these men that are trying to figure out a way to make a way, find, trying to find a way to make a dollar out of 15 cents. And they're in the unfortunate, horrific situation that no black boy should ever be put into, where a black boy grows into a black man who has to go beg a white man to let him feed his family. I will just tell you right now, I don't care if anybody gets offended by this, but a black man should not be in a position where he's got to beg a white man to get enough money to buy food for his daughter. That part of the whole discussion is crazy. It's illogical. It makes no sense. It has never worked. It is. It, 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 it infuriates me, honestly. It infuriates me. So, you know, because you're taking your position, comfortably taking your position in second place, third place, fourth place, whatever place you're in.